Artificial intelligence is not new, as we all know, but it certainly has a new lease of life, and that's impacting developments and strategies across all industry verticals. And in the telecom sector, there's a major push amongst the network operator community to become AI native as soon as possible. Well, to find out more about this trend, I'm talking today with Hanen Garcia, Global Telco Solutions Manager at Red Hat. Hanen, good to see you again. Always a pleasure to chat to you. Um, so uh, tell me, how is Red Hat supporting telecom companies in their journey towards becoming AI native? And can you provide some uh, examples of specific use cases? Well, Ray, that's a question I get quite frequently now. Um, when every discussion I have, we're having with customers is uh, there is the AI topic coming up. And I will give you one word, it's, it's a scale. Um, Red Hat, uh, at Red Hat we're supporting the telecommunications companies in becoming what we can call AI native by enabling them to scale the AI and ML strategies that are implementing. Uh, and that goes with um, manage the data efficiently or automate all the processes around AI. Um, it is one thing uh, when you have a small team of data, AI, ML, data scientists, you know, creating one service. It's another when you have 10 of 100 of services using the AI. Uh, technology, especially on telcos, uh, when you have all these different silos across the organization. So, and and AI is 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 uh, is is a very complex technology, and and all aspects from data governance, uh, model training, and the life cycle management of all of that um, is is uh, is not an easy task. Um, so, and Red Hat, what we are trying to do is we're trying to make that complexity easier for the customers uh, so that they can focus on actually the task and the actual use case and the actual implementation that they want to use uh, AI for um, to make it viable to drive new revenue stream with cognitive services, um, improve customer satisfaction, to reduce churn, uh, improve operational efficiency, we, to reduce costs. We hear a lot about that. And, um, and other, many other uh, things. Uh, to give you another example, um, detecting anomalies on the signaling plane uh, to avoid call drops. So uh, we have uh, this work going with, uh, with a customer where they're actually trying to see how we can build models or, or, or help them predict anomalies that, uh, that will cause call drops that uh, end up in some cases into heavy fines for the operators as they have to respect SLAs. Yeah, no, this is all important stuff and there's so much work being done to uh, advance a lot of these very useful use cases for the operators. Now, as AI continues to transform telecom operations, uh, what role does Red Hat's open source approach play in enabling innovation and scalability within the AI native ecosystem? Um, well, you know, when, when it's come to AI, we are heavily contributing to open source. Uh, um, uh, probably you are aware of this and, and Red Hat and IBM, we have open source actually the, the Granite family of models. Uh, to help enterprise build AI solution based on a, on a safe foundation. Um, there is, and, and this is very important, uh, I, I want to highlight that because when we're, we're seeing many customers that have started uh, as well as well as advancing in using models out there that they probably don't know exactly what the sources are, how the models were trained, and that in, in, increased the risk on, on, on what the result could be at, at for uh, specific cases um, that they don't have, they have not test before launching the services, right? So um, this is where, where we have uh, put it, um, help and contributing in the, in the community as well, is, is that, right? Creating those models that provide that safe foundation, understanding how the models are, are, are trained with, with data and, 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 uh, and provide transparency um, when it's come to using AI models, right? And uh, we have as well created this uh, Institute Lab uh, open source community where those open source models can be expanded 
to include knowledge and skill from specific areas of the business. It could be from the radio access network for the core network or a specific business uh, like uh, roaming services or simply answering uh, questions to the customers uh, on a specific services that they want to hire from the operator. And, and with the Stroke Lab, we have as well, uh, we are using as well what we call um, the synthetic data generation to make the tuning of the model um, a task that um, most of the people could execute on. Uh, we have a great demonstration um, that uh, we have given at Red Hat Summit on how all this technology works. And it's uh, quite impressive how basically somebody in, in an organization can use uh, these processes and these models to actually uh, create a service or expand a service that they are already offering to the customers. So the Instruct Lab open source community is, is all about giving control and transparency uh, to how the, what data are we using to train the models and how the models are trained and everybody can contribute into that. So um, as well, well, we have enterprise grade products like uh, Rel AI and OpenShift AI uh, that we are putting all that open source innovations uh, in the hands of the customers. And together with our ecosystem, of course, uh, we have partners uh, where we are actually designing and building AI, a specific solution for the telco industry. Now, you mentioned earlier on the complexity associated with uh, AI deployments. Uh, how is Red Hat helping telecom operators to address the challenges of AI integration, such as data management, real-time processing, and ensuring compliance in highly regulated environments? Well, that is, that's a very good question, Ray. Um, you mentioned data management and, and data is, is centric to AI, right? Everything AI, ML, that every approach, every solution will be driven by the data. So we have been working with our ecosystem to make sure that we have the right solutions to help our customers in, in the process of data ingestion and data processing itself. Um, of course, there is not just that, but the integration with all systems surrounding uh, uh, the infrastructure and looking into aspect of you know how we can capture uh, capture the data and how we can transport the data to the systems that will be in charge of actually processing it and training the model with that data. Uh, and it's, it's very important. It's very important. Most of the operators nowadays have already in place a strategy for uh, for data management, and we are thinking with them is how we incorporate that strategy into their AI strategy as well. You mentioned another important element that has come to processing and, and real time processing. So we are working with partners like NVIDIA, Inter, ARM, and AMD that are creating the technology that is used to actually process that data to train the model, to tune the models, and sometimes as well to serve the model when we are uh, looking at uh, scenarios for inference. Um, so, and this is very important that uh, the work that we're doing so that all the capabilities on, the, on that hardware is available on our platform so that people that is going to be um, creating the models, tuning the model, doing the data processing can leverage all those capabilities in the hardware. And this is similar to what we have doing before with NFB uh, when we we're looking at a scenario for, on, on data plane acceleration. Uh, but for AI is a little bit more uh, uh, new uh, on, one, on one sense and the other sense is uh, something that we have been doing for a long time as well. So is new in the sense of there is new hardware capabilities that are coming every single day Okay, and on the other side is something that we have been doing because we have all this experience coming from what we have been doing with the telco before. So GPUs acceleration or DPU acceleration is something that is not new to us, and we have been working for a long time with vendors on that and bringing those capabilities now into the AI layer. Uh, this is what is what has been our task lately. Um, you mentioned as well another topic that is regarding compliance and, 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 and regulation, right? And, and this is very specific for the telecom operators that are heavily regulated when it comes to the data and, and, and the subscriber data, right? And not just the subscriber data, but usage of 
uh, of the subscribers as well, right? So, and uh, and this is something that we have been working for a long time. You know, we have making sure that our platform is um, provide all securities uh, um, requirements that they might have with regard to the specific regulation. But as well, when it's come to making sure that we can isolate and work well between the different environments. Operators will be using infrastructure that is on their premises for data uh, from AI uh, and ML, but they will use as well services from hyperscalers. And with Red Hat, for example, OpenShift and the, our hybrid cloud approach, this is something that we are as well bringing into the AI, making sure that operators can leverage those capacities, those capabilities on the different environment for the task that they want to do, for the solution that they want to do, keeping uh, all the environment in compliance with the, with the internal rules and regulations. Now, of course, every company is trying to get a piece of the action as the AI market grows. So uh, what unique advantages does Red Hat's hybrid cloud infrastructure offer to telecom companies that are looking to enhance their AI capabilities? Um, well, you give away the, the answer. I think it's in the, one of the key milestones or the key uh, elements of facts is, is our hybrid cloud approach, right? I mentioned before that uh, having a platform or having a framework um, that allows them to use the capabilities uh, and the resource where they are is something that is key. And this is something that we are bringing with uh, OpenShift and OpenShift AI uh, in this case. Um, but as well, everything that it's come, and I mentioned this before, it's come around the, the modeling. So we, uh, we have now uh, provided the capabilities in the sense of open source models. Um, in, uh, Instruct Lab community where you can have now the capability to train and tune the model according to what you need from an open source model where you control and have the transparency. Um, with OpenShift AI, you have all the capabilities to manage the life cycle that's come from data ingestion, data processing, the model training, and the model serving. All of those capabilities are there to provide our customer with a trusted foundation, a trusted platform uh, for their AI solution and provide them choice as well, as we work with uh, many of the AI um, native partners in the ecosystem. I mentioned a few of them. So we are trying to make and give the, the telco organization um, the scale to bring those solutions to their customers, AI-based solution to the customers in a safe and a trusted manner. And at the same time, they can leverage everything that they have and everything that's available to them to achieve that, that, uh, that target as well. So we are bringing a lot of capabilities uh, into into the platform and we are putting those capabilities in the hand of, of customers already uh, when it's come to creating AI services. Okay, great. Well, fantastic insights there, Hanan. Thanks very much for joining us today and look forward to chatting with you again soon. Thank you very much for having me, Ray.